Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Healing Body, Mind, and Soul. I'm your host, Ariel Asher, and today I have the honor and privilege to be here with Kimmy Avery. And Kimmy Avery, oh, Kimmy and I go back a ways. We have, um, we've done a lot of classes, a lot of seminars together. We have um, known each other and she is just amazing. She is a relationship navigation specialist. And I thought that she would be a perfect fit for the Healing Body, Mind and Soul interview series because she is doing something so interesting. I'm gonna let her tell you about it. And I hope that you'll enjoy this moment with Kimmy Avery. Kimmy, how are you doing today? Oh, I am fabulous. It is so great to be here with you. I adore you. I love what you're up to in the world. And thank you for having wow. me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love you. I, I am so happy that you were an Insta Yes to be on my podcast. I'm having such a great time interviewing different healers. And I've had different people coming to me with so many different modalities. And um, some people that you wouldn't expect that wouldn't be like traditional healing and some you know it's been very very interesting so can why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about the work that you do as a relationship navigation specialist and i know that even before you did that you were also a healer so tell us about your healing journey kim I have been helping people have amazing lives and feel good in their body for my entire life. I started doing massage when I was five years old. My godmother was a healer and an herbalist. And then I transitioned to being a professional massage therapist. And when I was about 21, I was just always giving massages to friends and family up until that time. And then through my, for about 20 years, I did massage professionally. And all the time I had wanted to meet a great guy and I wanted to get married. I wanted to have a family and it wasn't happening. And then when I was in, I was 36 years old, I started studying about men from a masculine perspective and everything changed. So I'm 51 now and I started understanding men and now I'm married. I, so it helped me meet my husband get married and stay married, which is, that's the feat, right? And Do you hear it, that, everybody? No matter where you are on the spectrum, Kimmy can help. Yeah. It's, <laughs> because it's about communication, right, Kimmy? Is it's that about communication, but underneath the communication, you can take all the communication classes in the world. If you don't understand that the person you are with, whether you are gay or straight, completely irrelevant, that the person you're with is different than you are. You have to get curious instead of being furious because they're doing things you would never do, right? You have to have that ability to be able to step into curiosity. And most of us suffer from what I call stuck in your own head syndrome or CEOs for short. We suffer from it because we're looking at the other person as a version of ourselves and that never ever ever works well in relationships. Wow. I, you know, uh, Kimmy, I, I think, you know, I live with my mother and, um, and even my relationship with my mother, like it, it just flashed on me talking to you right now, how this stuck in your own head syndrome could be detrimental to any sort of relationship. <laughs> oh yes. We actually did a call last night. I do regular calls with my clients and groups and, and I did a call last night with a, and the subject came up about a gal who's helping to take care of her brother who has schizophrenia and the relationship dynamic there plays out, you know, wow. it really, it applies to everything when we get out of our own head and we start seeing the other people as unique and different. And then we become curious about them and their worldview and how they experience things. Once we develop that and we are, accepting of their differences, then we can learn to navigate those differences. As long as we have to have them be exactly like us, we are never, ever going to have a good relationship. Ever. Right. And it's that perspective outside of oneself. 
right, right that you're talking about that perspective. Now, um, why is it that um, this hasn't been taught before? Or why is it that um, people, why is this a new fresh idea? Um, <laughs> it, well, I think that this is, and this is touchy because there's a difference between like a stereotype, which is when you say man, men are, women are, there's a stereotype that pigeonholes people and an archetype, which is the masculine dynamic or feminine dynamic, which we all have within ourselves. The masculine is this provider, protector, producer, individualistic energy. The feminine is the supporter, adapter, enhancer, relational energy. And they don't always see eye to eye. In fact, most often they won't see eye to eye unless they drop their guard, become curious, develop a, what I call perceptual fluidity, the ability to step into somebody else's shoes and learn about them, then they begin to have a conversation that they can navigate with. If you don't have that, you can't have a good relationship. And why hasn't it been taught? It's, it hasn't been taught because I, and I, oh man, I, this is, this is the part, part where, um, Women often have a perspective based on the feminist movement, based on the last 98 years where we have been fighting for our rights, that we are equal and the same. And in that charge to protect ourselves, to be seen, to be heard, to be valued, we have devalued men. And in that conversation, the reason that it hasn't been taught to understand men or, and it, I mean, and men to understand women. I mean, I go both ways. I'm not just like, oh, ladies, you've got to get it together and understand men. It's like men have to understand what we're up against too and what, who we are. And the reason it hasn't been taught is it really hasn't been very accepted to be curious about a man's perspective. And so, you know, I, I walk the line because I want you to have an amazing relationship and I want men to feel valued. I want women to feel valued. And we are equal and very different. That's what the frame I work with. Right. As you were talking about um, the feminist movement, and I um, was raised um, feminist, right? Yeah. And even a little bit ultra, right? A little bit of like down on men energy runs through my family. The women were strong and opinionated and you've met me. So you probably find that as no surprise, but, um, yeah, yeah. But I remembered, um, I remembered thinking, you know, the women sort of become channels of masculine energy only in women's bodies when they get that contrary, right? It's just, they're bringing in male yeah. en energy. And I'm not talking about sexual, sexual orientation or anything like that. I'm just simply talking about the energy dynamics. But, um, but it's really interesting. Um, the feminist movement created a different, a different thing. Now, I'm not saying it's bad or wrong, or, um, um, but, um, right. but definitely interesting how our society deals with all, with all of that. Fascinating. Well, stuff. and there are, and Ariel, there are aspects of how women imagine themselves to be men, or we step into putting up the guard to be masculine. And it's our perception of what we think men are like. And we're not actually even channeling men exactly. We're yeah. thinking how, okay, so. I have to be clear and direct. I have to learn how to do that as a woman because there's nothing in a woman's nature to get us to be clear and direct until we're upset, right? That's a problem. And so <laughs> I have to learn how to be clear and direct, right? Yeah. The challenge is that we think when men are clear and direct that they're jerks. So we don't want to be a jerk. So we hesitate to say anything. We hesitate to do anything, uh, be clear and direct until we are upset. And then we're throwing a tantrum or we're you know not really nice about it and then they back away and then we say they don't care what we think which isn't actually the truth they care very much what we think most men and most you know of course there are broken people all over which is why we do our work right yes and 
most men really want to make women happy. And most women really want to be with a loving, kind man. And if we learn how they operate, we can see the gems of what they contribute to us. And then we're really happy. It's a, it's kind of a win-win. It's awesome. Hey, you know, Kimmy, every one of the people that have come on here, I've asked them to give us a super tip. Um, but could you give us two super tips? Could you give us a super tip mm -hmm. for the men and a super tip for the women who are listening um, and how they could take um, the first step or what they could do to improve their relationship um, with everybody in their world? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'd say the first, I'll give you, uh, the first tip is what I'd call the respect factor. And that has to do with the fact that as women, we typically have a diffuse awareness, which means we are pouring into many directions and we can start a conversation on a dime. No problem. And when we walk up to a man to talk to him, we are usually interrupting, like 99% of the time, interrupting what that man is doing. Even if it looks like he's not doing anything, we're interrupting <laughs> his single focus. Okay. So, right? So if we could say something like, hey, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'd like to talk to you about this. When would be a good time? And um, you wait and when you say, I'm sorry to interrupt, I'd like to talk to you about this and you pause and you wait until you have his attention You say, you know, when would be a good time? And he might say right now, or he might say, oh, in half an hour, I can give you my full attention. The beauty of that is you will get a man's full attention and you will feel seen and heard and valued. It's amazing how it works, especially if you manage to wait. So that's the first tip. And let's say the second tip for men, men, and that's for women, and, and men can also be interrupting women too. So that's, sure, sure. you know, the respect factor. I'm sorry to interrupt. It's a respectful thing because you have to get your point across and you have to say something. But if you start talking right away, you will feel unheard and unvalued. And then for men, there's a special organ in a woman's body. It is right about here in her heart area, and it's called her feelings. <laughs> her feelings are true and real. Maybe you don't trust your feelings. No problem. But she does more than anything else in the world. And you need to understand that when she's feeling something, whether or not it's rational or logical or anything whatever you might think about it if she says i'm feeling this you've got to say wow i'm sorry to hear that you're feeling like that is there anything i can do to help is there anything i you know is there anything you want to tell me about and be able to hold the space and let her feelings go and play a course instead of avoiding them because if you avoid the feelings then she's going to clam up she's gonna like her heart will get walled off and you will be like wondering where she went and she's protecting her feelings because they're everything to her so those are great tips thank you wow those are super valuable so kimmy what's next on the horizon for you what's what are you doing in this um, powerful year of 2019 well, I'm launching, so I do personal relationships with Conscious Couples Network. And then in my professional life, I work with super genius teams. I work with corporations to help men and women navigate the workplace effectively and communicate to begin to bring the structure of genius together when everybody's feeling fully heard and valued. So I'm really speaking a lot about that. And I, of course, I speak about personal relationships too. So what's next for um, the, anybody who's listening could be to speak with me about their situation. If they are struggling or feeling pain and agony or upset or whatever about their relationship, don't, you don't have to do it alone. You can go to meetwithkimmy.com. That's meetwithkimmy.com. And get a 30 minute session with me. It's complimentary. It's an opportunity just to get some tips and tricks on how to navigate this effectively. 
Right. That's so awesome and so generous for you to um, offer that. I know that um, I have a lot of clients that can benefit from your work and it's so wonderful that we have the opportunity to offer this to all of our listeners. Because I mean, it's just stupid to, to, um, to stop your life or to sit in a state of upset when, you know, when help is available to you. I, and I know a lot of people, they wait until they're at the verge of divorce and my work is really cheaper than divorce. Cause <laughs> it's, it'll save you a bunch of money. It'll help create a team and heartache. It'll, it'll save and you heartache. Heart. Oh yeah. man. The heartache shortens your life. You know, it doesn't have to be like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Kimmy, it's been so wonderful to talk with you today. And I know that our listeners got a lot of value from everything that you had to share. Can you one more time run through your contact information should ever, anybody want to get in touch with you? Well, so they can go to meetwithkimmy.com and they can sign up for a 30-minute session with me, complimentary. And they can also sign up for my newsletter list at ConsciousCouplesNetwork.com. That's ConsciousCouplesNetwork.com. And they've got lots of great articles, great content. It talks about all the free classes that I do and all the um, workshops. I, I really want to support uh, women and men on changing the way we're relating to each other so that we can have all of our energy focused on healing and transforming the planet with love. So, so that's Sing how you get a hold sister. of me. Fantastic. Yeah. Sing it sister. All right. Okay. Well, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in today and thank Kimmy for um, being with us. And I hope that everybody will tune in one more time to healing body, mind, and soul with Ariel until next time. This is Ariel.